Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us at Gallery 360 and the opening reception for Visible Noise. This is an incredible show and we are so proud to not only be able to have the show at the Gallery and the University, but have with us today two of the artists involved with the work that we're showing, Stacey Robinson and John Jennings. I'm going to start with Stacy Robinson, and we're going to bring John over to join us. Stacy, it's so great to have you here. I'm going to pass the mic off okay. to you, and I'm going to ask some questions. Okay. But part of what I wanted to talk to you today is what it's like to collaborate with someone and what that process is like. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll speak specifically about collaborating with John because that's who I'm collaborating with most of the times right now. So I'll, I'll, let me speak about our process okay. and the simplicity of our process. So I actually use my iPhone, <laughs> an older one too, it's a 4S. Um, has a great camera on it. And I actually draw on whatever paper I have around me. Sometimes it's typing paper, it's cardstock. And I'm actually, I usually, create one panel of our comic book at a time. I'll shoot a, a picture of it, I'll take a picture of it, and I will message it to John. So when we, when we um, created Kid Code Number One, for example, um, much of the, for much, much of the book, he was in San Francisco. I was messaging him images and, and you know pencil images, very light images, and from those images, um, he created full color inks colors that was then passed off to our our writer and co-creator Damian Duffy, um, Tan Lee of our group Black Kirby, um, who actually added the text and the narrative in there as well. So our we keep our process very, very simple um, using the technology that most people would have on their phones to create the Afro future. Excellent, excellent. So it's really a mixture of, of let's say classic comic book uh, style and drawing with new technologies, mm -hmm. using the capabilities of the phone, using the capabilities mm -hmm. of software on Absolutely. computers, Absolutely. and really combining them. So mm -hmm. you're moving into new technologies, but you're not losing the history and the past and where this is all coming from. The process is right. deeply entrenched. In Absolutely. So it's the idea of the Sankofa, right? It, uh, it's the idea of as we're proceeding to the future, we do not forget our past, okay. right? So. You know, the Black Kirby, right, celebrates the work of Jack Kirby. So, so we, we are... Um, and for, for an audience who doesn't know who Jack sure. Kirby is, I do. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so everybody out there, I promise you, if you've never heard of Jack Kirby, you know Jack Kirby's work. So if you've watched the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, the Incredible Hulk, Iron Man, the Avengers movie, you know Jack Kirby's work. So when the Avengers movie was about to drop, right, John and I had this very heavy debate about um, residual um, funds that should come to Jack Kirby's descendants, right? Jack Kirby was work for hire. He had been paid years ago for his work, his creations that went to, to film, that nobody knew how much money he was going to make in the future, right? Stan Lee and Jack Kirby were best friends. Stan Lee is getting all kinds of credit. All He's kinds. all in the movies, right? <laughs> but we're looking at this and thinking, if John and I, who are collaborators, we're best friends. One of us were to pass, and our, our collaboration be, you know, made millions and billions of dollars, um, one of us should break off our descendants. Now, that's an ethical or moral question, right? Maybe might, might not have place in, in the legal world, but for us, it was very, very different. So it actually, that type of contention um, allowed us to think about um, some other areas of contention, right? Okay. Uh, we, we grew up in, in loving comic books. We love Jack Kirby's creations. However, he created a very um, white normative uh, of, of narrative uh, well, comics, future, right? Viewed through the eyes of a white man. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But we grow up and we're like, well, where are we at? You know, I want to see where am I at in the Where's future. Our culture? Absolutely. So, I, I mean, if you're a black person growing up in comics, you've, we've, we've all asked these questions. But being an artist, um, being an artist has allowed us, John, get over here. See, he's all right. So being, being an artist, um, we, we've been able to actually, John, will you get over here? 
right, we keep talking about it. Right. All right. So, so see, <laughs> so being artists, right? We actually had the ability to challenge the the normative, right? That we grew up understanding, loving in comics. Right, so we were actually able to recreate a future where black people exist in the comic books, where we weren't always getting arrested, we weren't always getting beat up by Spider Man, right? So we actually put ourselves, like Octavia Butler did, Mm -hmm. put ourselves into the story by creating our own stories. I've been talking enough, you might want to. Oh, okay, cool. What was the question? (laughs) Well, we were talking about process and talking about just like in collaborating with each other, and and we started off by discussing uh, how both uh, um, traditional methods and newer technologies are combined and folded together so that you can work together collaboratively, whether you're in the same room, whether you're in opposite sides mm-hmm. of the country, but the which, process is still key, the process is. Which we have right. been. Did, did you mention that, that when we did Kid Code, a lot of it was? Yeah, I was, here, I was in Buffalo, you were, you were in San Francisco. Yeah, 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 yeah. so it was like technology has become like a really important part of, yeah, with the phone, exactly. Yep. Yeah, so so the merging of those things. I wonder if it's because too, both of us are kind of Generation X, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's like right at the cutoff where there's a lot of like um, uh, classical training yes. going on in art, mm-hmm. right? But then you're starting like the Apple is starting to pop up. You know, I never would have thought that I would use the the computer so much to make art with. I really balked at it at first. People laughed at the computer when it first came out, like, oh, this thing, you know. But now it's like. It's changed the way that we. It's changed the game, right? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. so, but 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 you still have to have your your connection between like traditional media, yep. you know. And, I think. And for what yeah. it's worth, as a designer as well, mm-hmm. the computer is still a tool. It's a tool, yeah. exactly. Still, you're you're yeah. still the it's ones not coming a style. up with the ideas. You're That's the right. ones coming up with the art. You're mm-hmm. the ones right. coming right. up with the story. So right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it is a tool. Yeah. Absolutely right. No, it's, you know, it, there's a time where acrylic paint. Was, it, was, was cutting edge. Right, mm-hmm. was cutting edge. Mm-hmm. It's like, There's oh my God, it dries so fast. Right, right, yeah, exactly. right. You know, <laughs> exactly. I remember a time in fine art where people laughed at using the airbrush. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, and now you wouldn't think any differently. Right. You know? No, of course not. It's just another thing. So it's how did you two meet originally? Was, were you oh, wow. academics together? Or were you? No. No, no. Did you we want... actually met online um, at a, a hub for our black geeks called Black Superhero. Blacksuperhero.com. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, we eventually met face to face. At, uh, in 2006 at a convention, comic book convention, a black comic convention called ECBAC, mm-hmm. um, East Coast Black Age of Comics. It's in Philly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, two years later, we met um, again in 2008 um, in Atlanta at Onyx at Con. Onyx Con. Yeah. And due to a, um, an accident or some uh, a fortunate an, a, you know, accident, um, we were seated next to each other in a private space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we could just talk all right. day. Right, so all we did was talk and we realized that we had so many, many and, more things in common. Right. Um, and he brought a lot of his work that's inspired by like graffiti and hip hop right. that I was already studying as a scholar. I was like, oh my God, because I'd never seen it before. I'd only seen his figurative work. I'd never seen his abstract you know, making or, or his form making and stuff. I was like, this is bananas, you know, so that's kind of like where it started. So, yeah, so. we decided to work together uh, yeah. from that time. Excellent. Yeah. And was Kid Code the first project that you worked on collaboratively together? or? Well, it? as a narrative. As a narrative. Yeah, 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 as a narrative, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 As far as, like, I mean, not to say that Black Kirby isn't a na- narrative, right. because there's definitely a narrative there, but what started to happen was people were, like, asking us about the prototypes we were making, right. and we are like, well, we want to see a book. St- uh, we want to see a book. A book, Unkillable you know, a book, book, book comic book. Or right. we want to see like, From you the, know. So he's referring to the original um, Black Kirby exhibition. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. A lot of those were like mock covers and diegetic prototypes, and people say, "Oh, when is this coming out?" Like, um, like Major Sankofa, which is a send-up of like Captain America, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When is this coming out? It was like, well, it's not really a show. It's a, it's like a pop art piece, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but then we're like, well, I guess we should make stories because people right. want stories. Because okay. I mean, every time, so we we had toured the show. And we, every time we went to a show, people had the same questions. Yeah. And so, um, okay, yeah, when can we pick up that book? Like, no, well, it's no, not, no, it's not really, it's, it, no, it's just an exhibition. Right, right. Exactly. So they're like, uh, yeah, y'all should think about making Doing that book. <laughs> like, okay, it's right. a lot After of work. We listen to our audience. So how many kid cookbooks have we now? How many issues? Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. <it's my> book. <laughs> okay. So there's one issue out right now. It's like 40 uh, pages. Okay. Right, 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 right. So I actually, yeah, I gave, I gave you a double size issue. Hey, right. I'm not on you about it. Hey, right, right, right. It's our publisher. Our publisher is, is yeah. telling me about it, right? right? Okay, so 
I just finished grad school, so I'm gonna give the entire interweb world my, my please forgive me. In, uh, kid code number two and three, they're not out yet because I just finished grad school. Okay, but they will Studying be out soon. Yes, okay. it will be out very very soon. I'm actually almost done with number two, okay. and uh, number three is being written right now. Great. So I'm going to go directly from number two to number three, and I have I am not getting a PhD. All right. So All right. uh, we, I'm just going to be working on books. And, and other where things. locally uh, in Massachusetts and specifically in Boston is Kid Code available? Are there stores that carry it? That's hard to say. I don't. I'm not sure, but uh, that is something we can make happen. I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I can connect with. And if not, uh, people can look sure. online. Of course. So, yes. Yeah, um, okay. um, we're available on Peep Game Comics. Yep. There's a Peep. Game Comics, C O M I S yeah, okay. dot com, and um, Comicsology. Yeah, okay. and through Rosarium too. And through Rosarium. And of course, like through IPG yes. and uh, Indie Planet. You can get hard copies through Indie Planet. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's right. Any plans in the future for new characters? Like, what what's around the corner that we can? And, and I, don't, I don't want you to give it all away, but right, right. No, maybe I, a preview of one. So our next project um, that I just finished um, pencils for on. Um, is a uh, Buffalo-based uh, team called uh, Night Boy. So imagine um, a boy, a 16-year-old boy with dyslexia. And his dyslexia is actually his superpower. Mm -hmm. It allows him to, to see the invisible world, which takes place in the panels and the gutters of the actual comic book. Mm -hmm. So it's an invisible world, wow. right, where... where these mon this monstrous world um, exists that actually kidnaps people from Buffalo. That's right. It's trying to infiltrate the space. Out there, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, Nightboy's character, his name is Jamal. One of the interesting things about Jamal is he actually created himself into existence, meaning he was drawn, he drew Nightboy, he was infatuated with this, this image, he actually drew Nightboy to life. He was drawing his future. He was drawing his future, mm -hmm. he became Nightboy, so where he becomes this hero that actually fights for the voices before Buffalo. Mm -hmm. and, um, so that's um, one of our, our next projects that right. we're working on. Um, and you want to tell them about the Leon Lowe project? Oh yeah, yeah, the Leon Lowe piece. Um, wonderful writer Tony Medina uh, wrote this book called um, I Am Alfonso Jones and so Lee and Lowe hired us to do the illustration work on it so Stacey's going to be doing pen pencils on it and I'm going to be doing the finishes on it. It's going to be a black and white book probably about 150 pages from Lee and Lowe books and it deals directly with some of the issues around Black Lives Matter but also deals with the surreal uh, to a certain degree as a storytelling mechanism to talk about these issues. So that's, and we're gonna, so that's gonna be one of our next projects uh, that we're gonna be working on too. Right. So. Right. And we have some other Black Kirby exhibitions that are coming up too. Uh, Mississippi, we have uh, at Jackson State University, mm -hmm. we have an exhibition popping up called Planet Deep South, mm -hmm. where we're looking at Afrofuturism in the southern space. Mm -hmm. I think I saw the poster for that. That's right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Poster for that. yeah. Great, and, um, great. Then we're traveling to Stanford University. Stanford University, so? yeah. They're teaching the, the Black Kirby catalog and, a, and a, um, an Africana Studies piece mm -hmm. that's looking at um, you know, Black Lives Matter, Afrofuturism, all, and how it functions together. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to probably be doing some work directly for that, too. Yeah, great. Yeah, Adam Banks teaches that class, so great. it's going to be really cool. And so that's in March. So. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, listen, there's a lot of people here in the gallery who want a piece of your time, and, and we've had a big chunk of your time for this broadcast. Uh, we're so excited to have both of you here today. We're even more excited to have the show and have the opportunity to share your work well, with the looks, Northeastern community. It looks stupendous. The response has been huge. Oh, the wow. we opened the doors, people were walking in to look at wow. the work and to have a better understanding Thank of you. what you create. And, that, and shouts out to Tim Fielder yes. and David, David Brain. Brain. Absolutely. Not here today, but Absolutely. Here as well. yep. The squad is representing. Yes. Yes. Heavy. Yep. Yes. And, and we're open with the show is up until March 14th. Yes. We're open seven days a week. We are free and open to the public. Free awesome. Open to the public. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> That's right. All right. Thank Get some you. Fruit you. All right. Excellent. Great job, guys. Thank okay, you. Cool. Sorry about coming in later.